now. How about them damn Celtics? And we are back with another episode of How About Them Celtics. Sam and I are here recording on Friday, August 23rd, with another August podcast for you guys. Uh, I think this is our, we got, what, three more August podcasts, I think, roughly? So this will drop on the 25th, then we'll have one on the 27th, 29th. Yes. No. So it's two th- after this one. This and then two more, yeah. Um, and then we'll get into September training camp at the end of September. So we're almost back to act. Get an early start, ball, which bless up. We would love. Um, shout out Abu Dhabi for for letting us start a little bit earlier than the rest of the NBA. Uh, but thumbnails. Shout out Abu Dhabi. Yeah. Nothing else. How you doing, Sam? I'm doing good. Uh, we're almost to the weekend. Well, it is the it's Sunday when you're hearing this, so you're actually almost back to the work week. It's actually a terrible day now that you're hearing this, but for us, it's Friday. So not a bad day at all. Um, We have some exciting stuff for you guys. As we get to the end of August here, we have some Celtics news. Celtics sound like they're ready to go for next season. Derek White maybe created Jack's like dream photograph, landscape, whatever you want to talk about. And we have ESPN's official prediction for the Celtics win total. You don't want to miss us complaining, bitching, and then we'll go through your emails some minor NBA stuff, the Reddit post of the day, and we'll go through the rat list. Get you up out of here. Get your Sunday going. Yes. Sorry, I ended mid yawn. That was <laughs> that was on me. And by you the just, time I realized it, it was too late. You, you kill me because then I get in trouble in the comments for no, interrupting you. You, you, you. This is unfair. It's unfair. It's him, not me. All you rats in the comments. Uh, anyways, Jason Tatum recently talked uh, about uh winning <laughs> a title he, he was uh speaking with uh an interview crew or, or someone at an event he did in st louis with ronnie 2k i believe uh where they opened a new court um for kids to play at in his hometown he said quote it's been a crazy summer was fortunate enough to win my second gold medal with the national team and to finally win an nba championship that's something i've been working towards for a very long time uh i've gotten extremely close a few times and finally got over the hump so that was special that felt like the weight of the world was off my shoulders excuse me after that one he talked about the team as well we had a hell of a team last year it was so fun to be a part of that the journey we had how we kind of dominated the regular season and went 16 and 3 in the playoffs it looked like it was easy but it wasn't it was hard played some really good teams and it's exciting to be able to run it back um same team coming back or even more motivated to win another one so I mean, the biggest thing I, I took from those quotes was the weight of the world was off my shoulders after that one. Like, yep. it, it goes back for me to the, the, the moment that everyone called really corny uh, when he said we did it really loud and everyone took it and used it as a meme and it'll be a meme for the rest of eternity. But I truly think in that moment he was just like, oh, my God, I don't have to worry about any of these fuckers anymore <laughs> trying to tear me down for not winning a title. And so I think that was just sort of like his way of saying, finally. Um, except he did it in a way that people thought was corny and it was corny, but who cares? The man won a title. Let him, let him be corny. He (laughs) he clearly should have been on the bench for the Olympics and, uh, it shouldn't be a face of the league because he's corny and has no aura. So I, I am happy that that is what you took away. Cause I agree. I think, um, him just detailing the relief of finally getting the job done. I think like we all kind of feel it which is like a dumb thing to say when you want to talk about us versus guys on the team. But like all the people I talked to, I'm sure I said this to you a billion times too, but I was like, I'm really afraid of what happens if they don't win. Cause it was like, Holy fuck. Like I, at this point, what do you do? So them actually getting over the hump is so meaningful for us. It's so meaningful for the guys on the team. And it's again, funny that this was something he said because I was re-watching some of the moments from the game five the other day because it's August and we are at the point of the summer where I am like, okay, like let's get it back going, like start watching highlights. I'm like, yes, this is fantastic. I can't wait till the game is back. And they sub out Tatum and they sub out Brown at the same time and they get their standing ovation. But you can just tell like the amount of like pressure just like leaving Tatum's body He's like doubled over. He's hugging Joe Missoula, lifting him up off his feet. Like the uh, the sheer amount of emotion pouring out of that guy says, hey, the job is finished. Watch out. Now he doesn't have all that pressure. There's no need for yips. There's no need for as many nerves. 
all people can say this time is like, oh, they couldn't repeat, which like a lot of people don't repeat. Yeah, obviously you want to. That's the goal. But like, who who they didn't repeat? Like, oh man, you have like a two year buffer before people are gonna be like, oh, can't get it done. Mm -hmm. I do think last year was the biggest, like you said, yip season of Tatum's career so far. Like he just constantly. Like felt like he was in his own head at times, especially with his three point shot, um, yes. and around the rim even at times in the playoffs. Like he just couldn't get shots to go that are almost automatic every other day of the week or every other year of his career. You, you should say, um, but hopefully winning a title means he doesn't have to worry about that anymore. Because I think he was just so concerned with getting it done last year that he was. That's all he was thinking about, and uh, I don't know. We'll we'll see if that changes heading in the next season it should hopefully it does i hope it does but just because in the finals he hasn't been great like this is two finals now that tatum has not been quite the player efficiency wise that we would hope I, i'm not he wasn't the I'm, score you wanted him to be like effectively yeah pretty much yeah efficiency yeah, wise funny. he was not quite at this i mean going back to the 2022 finals the only reason i'm bringing this up is just because like i'm interested to see if now that the pressure is lifted if he's going up another level instead of like having questionable type performances like in the warriors finals the average like just under 22 points a game on 37 percent from the field this finals he was 39 percent from the field for 22 and that's fine. Like they got the job done. He was excellent as a distributor. He averaged seven assists a game, eight rebounds a game. He didn't turn the ball over very much at all. He only had three total turnovers the entire. I'm sorry, 16, three blocks. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> but like... still, like assist to turnover, it's not bad, especially for someone that's not a point guard. Like he definitely has improved in that sense. It's been a big two years for him. But next time they're in a high pressure situation, I'm very curious to see like how he plays over the course of the series, not so much like in games. Like thing about like pressure situations, game six in Philly, he wasn't very good for most of the game, and then he steps up in the biggest moment. Like Tatum typically has a good big moment history. The finals have just been very strange in terms of efficiency. And you can chalk that up to, well, he's just getting all the attention. And that's a very <clears throat> fair argument. Yeah, it'd be nice to see him put the ball in the bucket a little bit better because we know he can, and he has in the past plenty of times. It's just that's it's, the next step, right? Wasn't great in the postseason. Yeah, if he can just do that during the playoffs, like, like I the mean, killer, he's... the killer like ability, I think is what we feel like. It, the both of us feel like that's next. That's like the I'm just better than everybody. We need to see more of that at the, for him to be at a new level. Yeah, it's just got to be a little bit more consistent. Like, you you know he can do it. We've seen him do it. It's just a matter of doing it more consistently, I'd say. So, we'll see. And the Dallas series down. was a great example, especially game five. Like, this is not tearing him down. Like, we saw that improvement in the series. He, he took the ball inside. He went through everybody. He just decided he was the strongest guy on the court in the closing moments of that game. And it was so important to them just icing everything. You could see it. I think you saw a little bit of it in game three too, like where he was just like, yeah, okay, we'll take care of business here. So if he keeps that up, he's going to be so much more effective this year. Mm -hmm. Jalen Brown also talked about going back to back or winning or trying to win another championship. I should say um, he said last year's over, to be honest, we celebrated. We had a good time. It's been an awesome summer summer. Excuse me. I've been having an awesome summer, by the way, uh, but it's over with. Now we got the target on our back. Everyone's trying to come after us. And I'm like, come on, it's back to work. I'm looking forward to next season. Basically just saying, I'm ready. I'm ready for the target to be on our back. And I feel like this is a product of them getting universally torn down after winning a championship instead of praised like most other teams. Good thing. Um, so it's kind of just the opposite of how other title teams are treated and might end up benefiting the Celtics uh, for the best. The Celtics have fallen into the disappointing son category where no matter what they do, their dad is just never satisfied. Their dad being the media. We are the Celtics father, I suppose, but they just can't get approval from like the national standpoint. It's just like, yeah, these guys, like they had an easy run and they didn't earn it. And you know, there's still plenty of questions about them going into next season, which fair enough. There are like health is going to be a major concern this year, but in terms of sheer ability on the court, I don't think there should be anything in question about this team. I think they are, going to be on paper the best team again, especially when healthy. Denver is a team that 
is close, but they just keep losing guys. Like you ever see those videos by SB nation on YouTube that are like the collapse series. And they take like, they, they will start like this team is at its pinnacle. They're winning championships and has all the notable figures. And then like, as the years go on, they just start to like fade away and like they pull them out. You can just see, it's like, okay, like this is a way that a team falls down the mountain is by just playing Django with their team. Yeah. It's sort of like what the nuggets did last year. Like, just taking chances that might not necessarily pan out like oh we don't need bruce brown we've got christian brown we you know uh, we'll let kcp walk it's fine we'll trust julian strother now and that could work for the best in the long run maybe but it's just a huge risk and you saw the result last season when i mean they it was not it's not like they were bad they went to a seven game series in the second round of the playoffs and they could have right. very easily gone to the conference finals but um they just fell short and I think the Celtics understand that you need to at least have consistency. And realistically, like for as good as the Celtics have been for X amount of years, getting to the playoffs. So deep in the playoffs, this is the first year in a long time. They've had like this similar of a team. And I know like it's, it's rare for any team to bring back the exact same roster to the extent the Celtics have, but just like, even in terms of major pieces and coaching changes, like, last year was Joe Missoula's first, the year before this was Joe Missoula's first year. Then it was Ime and then it was mm-hmm. Brad, um, and then it was like the, the injured year where Jalen was hurt in the playoffs. And so there was nothing consistent there. And it was like this ragtag, like COVID year, a bunch of players randomly in and out. Um, year before that was the, the bubble season, which was obviously a random season. Then Kemba was there for the first time. And then Kyrie was coming back from off an injury. Then Kyrie was just there for the first time. Like they haven't had the same core group in terms of like the best players in the team since like they're, they like, Paul Pierce realistically (laughs) and so this is gonna be the first time they've had that which I think is gonna be an underrated storyline that people aren't gonna pay attention to as much yeah it's it's funny that they've just almost played musical chairs with who their best guys are they've had familiar faces on the teams throughout the years like Marcus was here for nine years Jalen's now been here for seven years uh Tatum has been I mean Jalen eight Tatum nine or seven I can't fucking speak the point is these guys have been on multiple versions of the team and have served as different types of players. Like Tatum's a rookie. He's playing like third, fourth option ball as a starter. And then the playoffs come around and he's the first option. Then the next season comes around. He's back to being a secondary option. Like Jalen was a bench guy. Then he had to step up in the playoffs the next season, like Tatum did. And then he was relegated and then Kemba comes along and maybe Kemba's supposed to be the guy. And then it's Tatum and then it's Brown. And then, like you mentioned, the COVID year was a crapshoot. You finally got a little bit of consistency with everybody being cemented into roles with that first EMA season and then the Joe season, which is just a shakeup because of the coaching change, like you mentioned. So it's going to be interesting to see how well the top guys perform just knowing that they can trust everybody. There's no new faces that they really have to get accustomed to. The rookies, I suppose, can be in that category. But how much are they going to play? How important are they going to be to the team's success in big moments? I'm sure they'll get some run. Like there's a back-to-back in Charlotte early in the season. Maybe you'll get your first look at those guys there. Little eyeball emoji for those of you looking for cheap tickets. Make the trip to Charlotte. Pay nothing to get in. Cheaper than going to a game here, probably. I wonder. That's a that's a good point. I wonder how much flights for Charlotte are that week. But <clears throat> anyways. Uh, Prize Picks is America's number one daily fantasy sports app with over 5 million active members. Prize Picks is the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. And unlike other apps on Prize Picks, it's just you against the numbers. All you do is pick more or less on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. Get in on the daily action with your friends and become a part of the Prize Picks community today. Preseason football is underway, but you can also pick more or less on 2024 season stats on Prize Picks. Will Patrick Mahomes throw for more or less than 4,300 yards? Will CJ Stroud's sophomore season result in more or less than 4,150 yards? Enter your season picks before week one kicks off. Prize Picks is available in more than 30 states across the country, including California, Texas, and Georgia. Me and Sam used prize picks all season long during the Celtics playoff run, especially in the finals, Eastern Conference finals, Eastern semifinals in the first round. We were picking more or less on Tatum dunks, on Drew Holiday threes, and always picked the less on the opposing star just to add some spice to the game. Download the prize picks apps today and use code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100. That's code CLNS on prize picks for a deposit match up to $100. 
Prize picks run your game. Next thing, Derek White brought the trophy to a golf tournament, which I like golf. I don't really watch golf, so like this is cool, but like, it's not like I I'm like it's, obsessed it's with Derek golf. White. It's a Celtics championship, and there's golf involved. It Top is, tier for you. It is true. I do like all those things. Um, he brought it to the BMW Championship. Um, his, I don't want to say I don't know if they're friends, but I know. Uh, yeah, I, I, he is cheering on. Yeah, him and Wyndham Clark played basketball against each other, and Wyndham Clark's like a professional golfer. Oh, that's right. In the thing, um, Derek White's dad told me about it when I did the story. It was it. Did, I didn't put it in the story because it's like there's just no place for it. But they played each other in like a middle school basketball game, and Derek like stole the ball and put in a layup to beat Wyndham Clark team to send him to like the states finals or semifinals or something like that. Um, but yeah, Derek White talked about it. Uh, he said it was a big rivalry. Wyndham was good talking about basketball, um, mm. but he's got the trophy. I can share a screen and show you guys a video. If you're watching on YouTube, very I'm handsome hanging out. I didn't um, know it was going to be here. I was watching it and I seen it on the ground and I was like, oh, let me hold that. <laughs> oh, he, he didn't he didn't even know the trophy was going to be at the tournament, apparently, uh, per Derek White. <laughs> Where was this tournament? Do you know? Um, I can find out in like two seconds. Castle Pines, which is in, let's see, Colorado. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. Yeah, sure. that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, okay. There you go. Um, but yeah, my question was, and we don't have to spend too long on this, this does feel like a random place like Jalen Brown could bring the trophy back to like one of his camps. Jason Tatum would bring it to St. Louis, like the Cardinals game. Um, Al Horford might bring it home to like the Dominican Republic. Like where, where does Derek white bring the trophy? Like what? Like this just does feel like got to bring it to coach coach prime at Colorado. <laughs> yeah. Universe. Okay. That's that's, that'd be let, a fun let one. the yeah. boys, let the yeah. boys celebrate with the Larry show. Yeah. Show what it's all about. I like that. They went there last preseason, so maybe he'll, he'll head back. I thought fun. you were going to ask the more important question of what in Rhode Island does Joe Missoula bring the trophy to? What What is the no. Rhode Island landmark? Where does he bring the trophy when he comes? Because he is he's going to be here at some point. Yeah, the, the, the big blue bug gets <laughs> to celebrate with the Larry. That would be pretty cool. I'm pretty sure they can put him up on the roof because they decorate that thing. <laughs> they get him dressed up like Hulk for uh, Halloween. They put the red nose on him for Christmas. Joe Mazzulla like just standing, looking over 95 in Providence would be an insane photograph, especially when what you else? have the, the fucking bridge traffic there just for him to look at. What else do y'all have? <laughs> we uh, He would definitely bring it to Hendrick, which is right down. The street. Yeah, yeah. Um, Prize State House. We've yeah, got... I mean, just the normal stuff. Something in Newport. He'd probably have to go to Newport, right? He'd probably bring it to the gym we play basketball. Rain one, yeah. Yeah. I've never been to Newport. Heard it's nice. Newport's all right. It's pretty nice there. It's Newport is like a sneaky tourist destination. So they have like really nice like stores and everything, shops. It's similar to like if you've ever been like to the vineyard in Nantucket. Nantucket I've been to. Okay. That may I, I can see that. Uh, last Celtics thing before the email, ESPN did their record predictions for the season, and they say the Celtics are going to win sixty games. 61. So four game, sixty one games. Oh, sorry. And so a three game fall off, but still more than I expect most outlets to predict. I don't know if they'll get to sixty again. It takes a lot to get to sixty wins. Like e even just looking at it from the perspective of like the the second strings won a lot of games at the end of the season, like which is something i think a product of the celtics putting together a good team but also some luck's involved like i mean scheduling hell, king, too yeah the kings blew a game because xavier toman hit a floater like it takes some luck to win x amount of games um so i'm surprised the espn thinks the celtics will do it again but i wouldn't complain i think it's very possible i just think there could be some fall off especially with the kp injury and just like them sort of realizing the regular season doesn't matter quite as much i do think they'll want the one seed again because i think that was super useful but i don't know we'll see how it plays out be year three in a row of them wanting the one seed. Just never forget Brogdon. Be it. I'll I'll talk about this niche talking point forever. Just going out before they play the Wizards. We want the one seed. Then they get smoked by Porzingis and the boys. It was so ridiculous. Uh, I I do think this win prediction is just high. And I'm like the I think they yeah. should win every games like type of guy. But like the injury of Porzingis is gonna suck. Like 
you may falter in the in-season tournament because of that. Like you're going to have to really be thin at the big man's spot when it comes to back-to-backs. I'm curious to see what they do with this. Yeah, it's going to be a great opportunity for experimentation and really finding out what you have in Tillman, who was only here half a season and didn't really get used very much. Somebody like Watson might see a little bit of time and seeing what improvement Nimi has made. I think you know what you have with Cornette, which is just always ready, always steady. He's going to go out there, probably get 2-2 and maybe a block and just be nails when he's in the game. He will not hurt you. But he's not going to be a massive move the needle guy. He did have that start one time when he had like 20 points. He was a dog. But For Raptors game. Yeah. I, I mean, I put it at 59, so I guess 61 is not too, too crazy. I just I think the 61 mark is a very high bar to set for a team trying to repeat and dealing with a major injury to start the season. So they should actually see, we'll see. if they can get in the play in and just get like it, it'll be a good way to build momentum going in the playoffs because I mean, you win your playing game and then you're ascent. So, all right, let me ask you this. Let me finish the point, then I'll ask you this. And then you kind of can you know, maybe steal home court, like take a win on the other team's floor, take the wind out of their sails. And, you know, you can kind of continue that tradition. You were a great road team in the playoffs last year. Instead of having nerves after you lose a game two, maybe you, you know, really get some momentum after stealing game two on the other team's floor. Like would they lose once on the road last year, twice. Sam, if this is a dumb bit, <laughs> you're going to go 10 minutes with it on the day that we have a time limit. What is where is this you going? You gotta fill content. You probably have like five minutes of NBA stuff. Where is this going? But seriously, would you would you if you could pick, even if you were the one seed, would you start now you could still have four home games, would you start the series on the road? No. You wouldn't. No. I think about this all the time. I think I would. I, absolutely not, because I want I want to start the, the I want to start the series with my best chance possible to win. And even though I think road versus home game is a minimal advantage anyways, I do think there is an advantage to playing in front of your fans at least a little bit. And I'd rather have the best chance to start the series in a win. Look at the Pacers. You start the series in a loss. Like you start that on a win. It's a completely different series. The Celtics steal that game. It changes the momentum. It changes the, the mindset of the entire series. It does. <clears throat> and so you want to give yourself the best possible chance to win in the first game. And I think playing at home does that. It feels like if you – so here's the way I look at it. I completely agree with what you have to say, especially with the Pacers point, right? But one of the reasons why that Pacers win was so big is was because it was a home game. Like, you lose a home game. I know you feel differently about it than most, or at least me. But, like, that is, like, a serious confidence boost for the opposing team. Like, if you lose a game on the road, it's like, ah, like, you're not really supposed to win road playoff games. Like, home team. So, how would you stack it then? I would probably go two on the road, see if you can get one, three, four, five at home, or maybe three, four at home, five on the road, six, seven at home. That's what I would do. That's too risky. Because if you lose those two road games, I don't care. Like, even if you're like, it's okay, we still have four home to win. You have to win four in six. Yes. Like, or excuse, or four in in six, right? Was that correct? No. You have to win four out of five games to win the series. That is hard, no matter what way you spin it. Like, that, that is not an easy thing to do. I don't care if they're home games. Like, that's why the road game, home games are first. Because you want to win as many home games early on. So you don't have to win, like... Like if it, say you lose those two road games and you win at home, but then you l- drop one of your home games, then you're dead. You lose. You lose the series. You're done. Like like you know what I'm saying? Like it's just too big of a risk. Like I, I get I, the re- I understand. I get the reward in theory of what you're saying, but I think the risk is significantly worse than what the reward would get you. You're effectively giving the road team a chance to build the like the the worst yes, team a chance. You're opening the door for them to get like a running start. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know. Let us know what you think of this. I think I think it's an interesting. I would be curious what our friends have to say about this. I get They'd what you're saying. Tell me I'm stupid. But well, like if you win the road game, then it's like, oh yeah, now we just have to win two at home. That's an easy series. But like that's just like the risk reward like way of looking at it. I just don't think is worth it. It's a good way to establish dominance right out the gate. Going yeah, but then the if road. you lose, then you you give up all control of the series. Not really. 
you let the other team get momentum. They get a when win that, at home. They're supposed to win that game. But, but the point, like, you are putting too much stock in home court advantage now. You're putting too much stock in playing at home versus maybe this the theory works ten years ago then, or or like fifteen years ago. Like when, think think, like, but I I, I think about like, let's say every game was played at a neutral site. What are the most important games to win? Well, you, it, like, we'll go to the bubble. All right, so you, you want to win game one in the bubble, of course. <laughs> yeah, and you want to win as many games one, as you can. Always in a row. the answer. Exactly. And so game two. And so if you're starting games one and two with a disadvantage, why would you put that upon yourself? And I get the answer is because then if you win it first, it's what you're doing. But but the 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 downside of it is if you lose those, then the road team, the worst team is feeling good about themselves, which and then they go into your home thinking, OK, we just beat them twice. We're fine. And then. I just I, I think the downside of it is just not good enough unless like it, it maybe is only good for the truly like like maybe Jordan's Bulls and like last year Celtics are really good on the road or the Warriors. But like in the grand sk- scope of things, it is significantly more advantageous to start with two games on your home floor that you can control the environment, in my opinion. But. I'm curious what people think of this. I, I don't think you're crazy either. I think I'm more crazy, but I do believe what I say. <laughs> I just, I just also think home and road games are overblown in general, and so I think it's just important to start with two games in the winning, and even if you can get the smallest advantage by a crowd, you take it. But anyways, we'll go to the email. Reminder, as always, you guys can email us at hbtcpod at gmail.com. Uh, we'll read it every pod, Tuesday, Thursday, Sunday. We got one from RJ this week, a new title, G-O-T-T. Uh, very early morning, guys. Here's a concept for people to argue about. Instead of the GOAT, I'll give you the GOAT. GOTS, greatest of their time. <clears throat> the NBA... I hear, Jesus Christ, RJ, it's already wrong. Uh, the NBA game and team building process has changed dramatically over the years to the point where we're trying to compare players across eras is arguably pointless, which I realize makes it perfect for Twitter and the morning shows. But the GOTT discussion means people would have digging into more of the history of the sport. My own list by the decades, the 50s was George Mike and the 60s was Bill Russell. 70s was Julius Irving. The 80s was Bird and Magic. 90s was Jordan. 2000s was Tim Duncan. 2010s with Steph Curry. The more championships you win, the higher I'll place you. Irving is special because his game and charisma drag four ABA teams into the NBA. What are yours for each decade? Be well, RJ. I think having no... The, the issue with this is having no LeBron and Kobe is unfair because their dominance was so long that it spanned across the 2000s and 2010s. So like, I get having just Tim Duncan for the 2000s because he won three titles into the 2000s. They get having Steph Curry for the 2010s. Because they got one in 99, 2003, 2007. And I think Kobe is your 2000s guy because they win. There's another Tim. Tim won 99. They won in 99. And then they won. He won five championships. So he he won another one. Oh, 2005. My mistake. My mistake. Yeah. I was going to say. But even Uh, that, all right. Kobe wins 2000, 2001, 2002, 2009. So that's four. It's true. So Kobe probably should be should be two thousands. That one's um, probably the most up for debate. I think. Yeah. I mean, the eighties is so up for debate that he put two guys, and it's very justified. But I think if you did this by like, yeah, it's just tough because if you break it down this rigidly, LeBron then, also made those eight finals. Like, you know, LeBron. yeah, you know what I'm saying. So, like, I would probably still put LeBron for the twenty tens, even though he only won. Two, he's won three, three. He won with three. the Cavs, two with the Heat. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Because then the next one was the twenty twenties, um, barely. But I would still put LeBron for that because I think. Wait, yeah, Le- Steph only won three in that time too. Yeah, it's definitely LeBron. No, Steph won. Oh yeah, he only no, won three. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely LeBron. It, I I think it's definitely Kobe and LeBron, not Tim and Steph. Am I crazy? For sure. No, I think you're right. Yeah, I, I just Tim think... Duncan is probably the. I get it, but I'm it's got to be Kobe. anybody else for the 2000s that deserves a shout. Either. LeBron, but he didn't win enough in his early years, he so he can't be yet. that. No. It's got to be Kobe, 100%. Shaq. Shaq's the only other Shaq one. Shaq also he, definitely, he won four in that span. But I, yeah, I would just, I'd say Kobe, and then I'd say LeBron. I think these are maybe the second choices for each one, but I just, 
I think Steph and LeBron won the same titles in the 2010s. Kobe won one more title than uh, no, they won the same. No, Kobe won. Four. Kobe won one more. Tim yeah, because he won at the end. Shaq too. won four. I guess if you want to put in the perspective of like those Kobe teams with the Lakers in the middle weren't as good as the Duncan teams, and so we like the consistent greatness. But I just, I think it's got to be Kobe, <clears throat> and I think it's got to be LeBron. This is a good question, though. I like the way you put it out. I think the rest of yours are fine. I'll get on board with it. No one's going to debate that. Bob Cousy yeah, no, snubbed know. for the 50s. Yeah. <clears throat> it's fine. Thanks, RJ. We appreciate you. Um, again, M- uh, ha- I was about to say NBC. HBTCpod at gmail.com if you want to get in contact with us. The NFL season is almost here, and as much as we love Celtics basketball here at How About Them Celtics, I love watching Pats games in person. I saw the Chiefs game this past year. They kept it close for some of the game, uh, but then Taylor Swift took over the Jumbotron, and the Chiefs ended up winning that one. But make sure you are ready to use Game Time. Game Time is the best place to find your tickets for all live sporting events, concerts, everything like that. I saw Noah Khan in concert recently too, and you know Game Time is the place to be. Game Time has a new feature called Game Time Picks that makes getting tickets to see your favorite teams play live even easier. Game Time Picks filters out the fluff to show you only incredible deals on great seats so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets. You look at some of the games on game time right now, and there's plenty of good stuff. The Diamondbacks are getting ready to play the Red Sox soon. The Red Sox are gearing up for a potential playoff push. Hopefully, they can get out of the wild card. And make sure that you have game time to get your tickets for all of those. I love the fact that you can filter out fees, or filter in fees, I should say, so you know the exact price you are paying on game time. Take the guesswork out of buying concert tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code CLNS for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code CLNS for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest priced, guaranteed. We can go to the NBA section here, starting with former Celtic Javante Green, who was signed with the Pelicans. Uh, there's no right. like, crazy news. Just to say, this is just it. I put like, cool. As my description for this on our sheet, um, quickly becoming Celtics East though. Them and the Grizzlies, Tyson, Javante hanging out in New Orleans now. Javante, yeah. Not I think that. that's it. I don't think they have another former Celtic up there. Oh uh, yeah, they do. Matt Ryan. Matt Ryan. Also, yeah, also on the Pelicans. So there you go. Pel- <laughs> I mean, good out. for Javante Green because I mean we were talking. I think this happened last year too. We were just like, what if he came back to the Celtics? Two years in a row. Two years in a row. He said absolutely not. Yeah, just, I mean, he might play in New Orleans, so maybe he wants that. But anyways, uh, good good for Javante Green. That was the extent of this conversation. Next, Steph Curry um, recently took the Warriors out of his Instagram bio and replaced it with Olympic gold medalist. And that matters because it's August 23rd and people have nothing else to talk about. <laughs> Is there a text, uh, uh, um, a character limit to the bios? Definitely. Yeah. All right. That makes sense. Yeah, it is weird, though. It's a little weird. But I I don't think it has any significance. Like, I don't think Steph, if Steph's going to leave the Warriors, I don't think that's the first thing. He'd do. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it's yeah, just like... I think there would be more smoke already if this was a real <clears throat> issue. Like the, the first yeah. hat to drop would not be watch out. He took the name out the bio. Yeah. And for what it's worth. The only other things he could have taken out of the bio, it says believer, father, husband, founder, philanthropist, and Olympic gold medalist, uh, Philippians 413. So, like, he's either taking out his religion, that he's a dad, that he's a husband, or that he does, like, a bunch of charity work that he loves. Like, he's of course, he's going to take out that he is a warrior, because everyone fucking knows that at this point. He's going to include, like, he that he is an Olympic champion in that spot and maybe change it back later. Like, duh. Yeah, I mean, Warriors fans hit the panic button. <laughs> Franchise guys leaving. He wants to play on the Lakers or the Knicks. And it or the it Miami. has been a, a very known thing for like years that Steph wants to win an Olympic gold medal eventually. Like that has just been a thing for a long time that he he wants to get yeah, one. And he yeah. finally did. No, he was never on a gold medal. This is his first gold medal. He didn't so. play on the 2016 team. I guess no. no. Oh, didn't he have an ankle problem or something that had him sit out? Yeah, it was like a big thing that Steph had never really played for Team USA until this year. Um, but now he did, and now he's an Olympic gold medalist. And, and uh, he was like the fucking 
Captain Clutch. <coughs> Unbelievable beast. close to the gold medal game. Yeah. Shout out to Steph Curry, man. <laughs> uh, next thing, the question I wanted to ask. Um, so I wrote an article recently, like three lessons the Celtics need to learn from the Nuggets if they want to repeat, blah, blah, blah. And that got me thinking, what was the biggest one hit wonder championship? And I don't know the I know the answer, but I figure we can have the discussion anyways. Like basically, like they were good that one year, haven't weren't good or weren't really great before that, weren't really great since. Like the Spurs won a mo- bunch of times, the um the Lakers won a bunch of times in a row in the same spans. Like those weren't one hit wonders. Um there are a couple answers and I think are pretty good, but like I think I'm the most curious. obvious one is yeah. So my I want to say before you say. <laughs> Okay. And this is technically I'm going to I'm going to classify it as correct. The Warriors in 2022. No. Because here's why. The Warriors <laughs> just... had just come off 2 years of being shit. They followed it up with 2 years of mediocrity after. But the one year they fucking found it was against our fellows the Celtics. Yes, and... but it was with Keep going. Sorry. Go ahead. And there was no in between, like, so especially on the after, the season after that was a disaster, obviously because Draymond punches Jordan Poole, but there was no, like, guy leaving, guy retiring. Like, it's not like the Bulls in 98 and they just become ass the next year, or I, I'm i guessing your answer is the Raptors? Yeah. Kawhi leaves. Yeah, exactly. Like, they didn't but, lose their guy. They still no, had the same group of guys, and they re-upped, and they paid him, and then it just didn't work out afterwards. That just It just can't be a one-hit wonder, though, because it literally wasn't. They had won that four in the of the decade. Warriors, to me, is. It's a different team. It was the same three guys who had won three titles before. But I get that a there's a t- different group, and they went through, like, almost a rebuild to get back to that point. But but it's it's the same three guys leading them to a championship two years after they won another, like a previous one. I, I get it. Like, I get the argument you're making, but when there are teams like the Raptors who hadn't made the conference finals before they won the title, and then they won the title, and then they are not going to sniff they it did. again. for They made it in 2016, but they lost. But it, like one time is not sure. okay. like a massive. Um, when there's the Pistons in 03 who didn't win a title at all for years and years before that. And then and they, they were, were like pretty good after that. Team. But like, yeah. And they, they like, did make the finals the next they went they won 04, they made it and lost to the Spurs the year mm-hmm. after. And then they yeah. were a contender in the East up until like yeah. the Celtics came around. But like when there's teams like that, picking a team who had just won it two years prior, like I get the gap in between was significant because they were so bad. They hadn't won in like, four years. They won in okay, I guess so. Yeah. I don't know. It just they they it was the same three guys that had won before. So I, I can't, I refuse to call that a one hit wonder. I, I just can't. Cause they, they had done it before. Like at the, at the very least they had the experience and knew what it took at the very least. Cavs. One hit wonder. Yeah, no, uh, that's a good one. Yeah. No, um, no except they, they made, made the finals. They like made, yeah. Year. Except they made the finals like a million times. So like it wasn't necessarily. I, I think of one hit wonder. I'm like, they were just never really heard from again after that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like a um, good, a good. Well, one it, be... it's got to be ever. Like they, they weren't heard from like ever before, realistically. Because like one hit wonder means one time, not like the last one. Like, like you could call the the last Bulls team to win a championship a one hit wonder. That doesn't. That's not fair. Because <laughs> like just because they didn't do anything I mean, after that, because they had been successful the like the years directly before that. There was no gap, right? I guess. Like the Warriors went through a period where, like, yes, they had injuries, but they were they were in the final. Bad. They were in the finals in 2019. They were and horrible in 2020. They didn't even go to the bubble. Yes, they had two they bad the years. Play-in. They had two bad years without their stars. But then, as soon as their stars all came back and were fully healthy for the whole seasons, and then afterwards, they were a mediocrity dumpster fire in 2023. Yes, this year they missed everything. But. It's still the same three guys who had won three titles before in the last 10 years. Three of the last. It's the same guys who had won one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Three of the last seven championships prior to that. They had won. I'm not disputing that you're correct. It's just the gap to me is enough of a buffer that was like. I get it. I get it. 
It was random. They, they came back for you one year and then fucked back. off again. Sure, but maybe, maybe we'll call it like a reunion there. album or something. I suppose. Like the band kind of <clears throat> forgets how to play instruments, or one of the guys is so old he has a stroke and then can't play the guitar anymore. If we really want to go back to it, Bill Walton winning the finals with the Blazers. Yes, in that is actually the answer. <laughs> that was just out of nowhere, completely random. Another, um, another like the Sixers in 83 winning. Yep. <clears throat> Even though they've been one. around, like they, they went to the finals and lost to the Lakers when Magic was a rookie. And then they were always like a pain for the Celtics in the uh, in the East, too. Like they would be in the deep playoffs against them. So by the standards we're talking about, the Blazers are probably the best answer because Walton gets hurt after and then just is never the same. Yeah, they were in the finals two years prior and they were in the West finals the year before and they were the playoff team, I guess. But uh, no, actually, 2011 no. Mavs. Right, that's sorry, the sorry. answer. 2011 Mavs is a good one. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, what's the Reddit post today? What do you got? Reddit post of the day is on the NBA subreddit, per usual, really. But it's on there. Comes from the brink of gunk. Post reads, who are your favorite, quote unquote, forgot that they played here players in your team's history? Every team has players in its history that are more known for playing elsewhere. Who are they for your team? We can go hmm. through the Celtics. Yeah, it's a good it's a good question. So for clarification, is it players that so like Shaq is an example, correct? Like Shaq is a good answer. Okay. A lot that's of the, answer, I'm gonna though. scroll through quick. A lot of, oh, there's a good Celtics one here. So I will stay there. But a lot of these guys are like all star caliber players that just like were washed or only <laughs> stayed for a minute. I feel like that. Garnett's the obvious answer, but I feel like he's known for the Celtics now. Oh, but his like he played. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like he played forever. Um so they, I love, there's a whole starting lineup of Celtics guys. Kemba you have one of them in Shaq. Yeah, is Kemba one? Does that count? Kemba is not one. I think that's a good one though. Kemba I is Kemba. going to eventually be a good one, I think. Why? So eventually? will Blake Griffin. Because it's like so recent. Like we're not like, oh, I forgot he played on our team. Oh, I okay. I guess from that lens. Uh okay. If if it's that, I'm definitely not gonna be able to get any of this shit then because I'm not gonna think of like two thousands guys or you should Dominique Wilkins, is that on there? That is one. Yeah, okay. I don't you're gonna have to tell me the rest. Uh I'll go in notability most to least. Sure. Uh Gary Payton. Yeah, okay. Rashid Wallace. Mm-hmm. Stefan Marbury. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Why not? I guess. <laughs> uh, Jermaine O'Neal. Good answer too for that. I mean, that was a good one. Al Jefferson. Al Jefferson. Random. I think Kemba's Pistol gonna Pete. be up there. Kemba and Blake. Pistol P. Maravich Celtics. Was he? I forgot about yep. that. Artist guess, Gilmore yeah, Celtics. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I feel like I have like a lot of these in the back of my head because I would only use Celtics players when I would play my team on 2K for years and years and years. So, like, I got very good at knowing the loopholes to this rule. Mm-hmm. I see. I'm trying to think of other guys. Rick Fox is, like, technically one, just because he was so much more, like, notable with the Lakers when they were winning championships. Yeah. He was decent for the Celtics. Um, I'm trying to think of, like, eh. I can't really think of any other great ones. I apologize uh, I'm, if I'm missing somebody obvious. I'm drawing a blank. Yeah, I'm drawing a blank. Nate Robinson, but he kind of just played for everyone. Nate Robinson's not known for a team. Because um, he was he was more known for the dunk contest than anything. <laughs> yeah, he's the Mac McClung. I feel like there's got to be like some like early 2000s guys we're completely missing out on. Probably, but it is what it is. Uh, uh, let's let's go through some good ones for other teams. Someone said Pat Ewing on the Sonics and Magic. Uh, which Allen Iverson for any team other than the Sixers. Yeah, <laughs> keep on the Raptors. Meta World yeah. Artest on the Knicks. <laughs> Tony uh, Parker Hornets. Directly what it, Tony Parker Hornets is a great one. Uh, Penny Hardaway oh. on the Heat. Amari on the Heat. Uh, Sean Marion on the Raptors. Chauncey Billups also a good Celtics one. That is a good one. Mm-hmm. I agree. Right, we can move on. All righty. We'll go to the rat list. What do you got? First and foremost, 
Rat list the A servers. The A servers were giving me a ton of problems today when I was trying to play Jack and I's college football dynasty. Mm. I would go to put hours on a recruit and then the servers would crash. And I can't tell if like it's a me issue or the servers are actually having problems because very laggy. It's mm-hmm. just like, uh, no, it's not down. And I'm like, Are you sure? Like I cannot stay logged in from so I reset my Xbox, disconnected it, reconnected it. I think it's the servers. I don't think it's me. But terrible way to start your day when you're trying to enjoy it. Yeah, not fun. Uh, Rat list the drive I'm about to have to make. It's an hour and a half to get to this place I'm golfing. Hour um, and a half. I didn't choose it. I was where asked, is Do you want to go? Merrimack Valley Golf Club. It's in Methuen. It's like the very top of Ma- like you know the little corner of Mass, in the top right. Um, Who's I was picking asked, that? People who live in Boston that are closer to Methuen. <laughs> Because I'm 30 minutes. They would like pick somewhere that's like in the middle. I was not. This wasn't a let's golf this weekend. This was hey, I'm golfing with this person. I have a spot. Do you want to play? And so I said yes. I see. So I was. You're such an addict. Well, I didn't realize it was this far away, (laughs) or else I might not have said yes. But I paid him to go already, and so I'm. How much you have to pay to golf? Uh, This place is 77, which isn't too too bad. The really nice places are a lot more, but not that bad. Um, I'm going to pre-list, uh, pre-rat list gambling. Cause I'm probably going to gamble tomorrow and lose at the casino before I go see childish Gambino, which is very exciting. Am I going to cry? Maybe I'll <laughs> cry. You think I'm going to cry? No, you're, you're not, not going to cry. cry. I've listened to so much of his music throughout like different <laughs> periods of my growing up though. Maybe I'll be a little emotional. I don't know. I haven't seen him before. It's true. If there was one you'd get emotional, it'd be this. So well, I'm not going to any other concerts, don't you worry. It's it's true. (laughs) I I forgot to bring this up when we were listening to Jalen. I the reason you didn't like it is because you just have no music taste. You only listen to the same two things. That's not true. I don't listen. I I listen to his shuffle now. I'm more I have I have branched out. To what? Very similar artists. No, not necessarily similar. Like, who? like give me you know, like play like Drake. Like it, it just will be like Spotify makes like a daily mix. And it has like it has like Tyler Creator. You it has listen... like a bunch of different 50 cents. Find someone. In My the point comments, is like 50 cent sound. It, he sounds like 50 cent. You listen to like you like very specific type of rap music. And that was just not that type of rap music. And I'm not saying I love it. It, was like, I, it wasn't it wasn't for me. I either. thought it was weird. <laughs> Because it's not Childish Gambino. <laughs> no, it's not that. It just it sounded weird. It sounded it, strange. I, I didn't love it either. It was just I can see why some people would like it if they like that style of music. Some people but, on Reddit liked it. To each his own. I think Bobby Manning. Let's go. You know what? Now that he is, I think he's spoken. So I'll pull it up. Oh, did you he? Have, I have his Twitter. Yeah, yeah. He, he said. I did um, see him tweet about. It. I did not log what he had to say. Bobby on. He said, do you like Jalen's song? He had six replies. Uh, 21 questions was better. I agree. Great bars, <laughs> but his delivery wasn't great, which is kind of to be expected. About What's 21 what questions? That was another, the other. Remember when Jalen did like another rap song a couple years ago with his brother? They were. It might have been during COVID when they were like in the. Oh, house. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. And then Bobby on this song. Okay, Jalen, where's this one going down in great b-ball rapping moments? More gifted than Christmas, question mark? So no no official mm-hmm. take from Bobby Manning, I don't think, but he he did he did put out a tweet about it. Um I don't know. It was like a little little strange to me. Yeah, it is what it is. It's just I guess not for everybody, which whatever. Um I don't know what else I have for rat list rat list Twitter, man. I, I just like you go into any comment section and it's just porn. Like every comment section, I can't see anything. Like if I want to like, like there's something like, Oh my gosh, look at this. You know, this, this, look at this is news today. Look at this. Look what this person did today. Well, blah, blah, blah. I go in the comments. I'm like, Oh, what do people think? Oh, what did they do? Because the tweets not actually telling me the full story. Bots porn. Terrible. <laughs> e- 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 fucker ruined the website. Oh my god, it's awful. It's so bad. Yeah, I don't like what he's done with the place. In fairness, just it's just not what it's past its prime. I still like it. Still love. I'm on Twitter more than anything else. But me too. But it sucks. It's It's terrible. 
Uh, speaking of Twitter, it. Ratless Snake. So Barstool has been sharing this article that they wrote about a 12 foot python coming up through someone's toilet and biting the guy's balls. That is my consistent number one fear when I'm in the bathroom, especially when it's not my own bathroom. Like, what if this? Like, what if a snake comes up and bites me? That's terrifying. That it actually happened. Yeah, I, I don't fuck with snakes. I don't fuck with bugs either. There was a bug flying around my room, and I was just standing there last night for like five straight minutes. Any kind of bug? Like, sit down. I just don't like bugs in general. Like, I mean, th- this was just like a normal like. This wasn't annoying in like in in the context of like oh I was freaked out by it, but it was just it just didn't stop moving for like five minutes straight. Like it didn't land. It just kept flying, so I couldn't kill it. So I couldn't swat it. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was You're just not, flying like, around the lights. Bugs, though. No, no. Well, I mean, certain bugs I don't like. Like, I don't fuck certain with spiders. Bugs, but not all bugs. Uh, yeah, no. Like, if a fly is around my room, I'm not, like, crying. But, like, this, it just wouldn't stop. Like, it was, like, circling the lights. It was flying around. Like, it just wouldn't land anywhere. And I finally sat down, and then it fucking lands out of my reach. I'm just like, are you Like, what are we doing? I was, just, I was getting pissed off. But I got it eventually. It, it, it met its demise. Don't worry. <clears throat> Final rat list. You got anything else before I go? I'm done. Rat list. I don't know what I'm I'm gonna put the rat list on Monopoly. Monopoly is the item sure. being rat listed. <laughs> but that may not particularly be the, the rat in this situation. I could be the rat. So, anyways, recently I have started playing Monopoly on the Xbox again. Back during like pre-COVID times, me and all my friends would play the Monopoly game. We'd go online, we'd have games, whatever. I recently started playing again. I'll play against the computer when I'm bored because I'm not I'm kind of out on doing the offline college football. It just doesn't have the same juice for me as doing the online one. Sure. Yeah. Kind of like I need something else to kill the time when I'm not playing online games. So I've been playing this. I played with my man Frank yesterday and I was like, it's probably like nine, nine forty five or so. I was like, Frank, like you want to play? He's like, yeah, I'll play. I was like, all right, like I'll make a game, see if anyone joins. Of course, no one joins. And we were like, you can actually like scroll through the different games that are open and join them. But we were joining and no one would start the game. So we eventually went and I was like, all right, like if no one joins by 945, I'm just going to hit start. We'll play one on one. So Frank and I played a two hour and 12 minute. It tells you after you finish long 1v1 Monopoly game. I lost. And I lost yeah. in the most. I don't really know how to describe this, but it was like a very valiant effort for me. What I sent to Frank after the fact was the 20 to nothing run the Celtics put together against the Knicks in game six in 2013, but still lost. And I was like, this was me playing Monopoly because Frank had boardwalk, like the two blue properties, like right from the beginning, which if you don't know are the most expensive ones in the game. And when you put houses on them, Basically, the other person is going to get fucked. He also had uh, the light blue Monopoly, which is on the first side of the board after you go past go. So that area was not very friendly to me. I was down to like nothing. All I had was the railroads and the rest of my properties were mortgaged. I had one Monopoly on the red ones, which are on the opposite side of go. Like it's like almost as far away from go as you can be on the board. Those railroads, I'll tell you, will keep you alive. There was one stretch where I was down. I landed on boardwalk. I had to mortgage everything, and I had one railroad. But for whatever reason, when you mortgage the railroads, you don't lose the value of having all four of them. Like, if they land, they still have to pay you $200. So he lands. I get $200. I unmortgage. So on. There was a stretch where Frank must have landed four times in a row on the railroad. It was fire. I was like, Frank, this is the equivalent of like the other team just cut your 25 point lead down to like 12 and you called timeout. Like, this and then is you what's still, happening. And then you still lost. And then I still like, well, it went on to like midnight. He had to, he's like, go to work. And he's like, dude, I gotta go to bed. Like, yeah, that's tough. I was like, all right, like, I will not try and mount another comeback. I'll just concede after like yeah. doing the next thing. But it was, I wish I had it like on a stream or something. It was, <laughs> I felt like I was hitting blackjack like time over after over. time after time yeah. after time. I was like, oh my God, this is an incredible hot streak. Peter, love that. That's all I got. I don't got anything else. I got to leave for golf. Uh, but Oof. yeah, we squeezed it out. Appreciate y'all for tuning in. 
Make sure to leave a like. Subscribe to How About the Celtics on YouTube. Follow us on Spotify and Apple. I want Sam take it out. Hey, thank you very much for listening and watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Leave a like. Hit the bell. You don't want to miss any of our daily uploads. New content at 5 a.m., whether it's full pods, Tuesday, Thursday, Sunday game recaps, the morning after each game, and other videos in between. We've got you covered. You can also find us on Spotify and Apple. All pods and recaps are there for you. If you follow, it goes right into your feed. Leave a five-star review. We'd appreciate that. Email us, hbtcpod at gmail.com. Send us your thoughts on all the latest Celtics news. Send us your rat list. We'd love to hear from you guys. We read your emails every single show. You can find us again at hbtcpod at gmail.com. You can find our socials at How About Them Seas, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook's the name of the podcast. Our streams are there. They're on YouTube. They're on Twitter. Jack's Twitter's at Jack's Mon NBA. It's infested with porn. And mine's at Sam LaFrance. It's a first. <laughs>